In this video, I'm going to show you the macros I use when proofing scripture recordings. So let's get started. So here I just got done recording the book of Matthew, or the chapter one. And I'm done with it. I have my markers, I've, I've proofed it and everything, and I'll show you that in my routine. But now I want to proof it and make sure it's correct. But I'm, I'm very strong about proofing the final product, not proofing something, then going off somewhere else, doing post-production and possibly add mistakes, deleting things or whatever. I want them to hear the final proof product. So the way that I end up doing it, I'll show you here real quick, and then I'll show you the macros. So I'm going to take it, I'm going to zoom in, and I'm going to find a place where there's some noise, and I'm going to listen to it here. Okay, that's just the, the room noise there, just to make sure there wasn't a big breath. And then I'm going to go up, and I have the shortcut, but I want to go to Reduce I Noise Reduction, and I want to get that profile. And now, the next thing I have to do is just hit my shortcut, and it's going to make a master for me. So there it just made a duplicate. Now it's going through and doing all the processing, and I'll walk you through this. And there I have my master. So now, when we're listening to it, we are listening to the master. With the noise reduction, the compression, the noise gates and everything. So if it's trimming words, they're going to say, oh, the beginning of that word is missing. And so then you can make adjustments to your effects. The other macro, and I'll show you how, these, how this macro works. The other macro is the retake. So say that they want to redo this right here. There was a mistake here. So we're going to take it. And I can, sometimes I put a marker there and I'll put, uh, so I know that we're going to be redoing that. So I go to here and I hit my shortcut and we want to record something here. And so this is the correction. And so they can listen to it and we want to record something here. And they say, yeah, that's good. And so we'll take it, I'll copy it, and I'll put it on the original, not on the master. I'll put it on the original here and I'll paste it. And then I can get rid of this marker here. Sometimes I don't do the markers because they're just in the way. And delete this. And I'm not going to master this yet because there could be a lot more mistakes. When I get done doing the whole thing, I'll remaster it again. So I might listen to this up here. And we want to record something here. And they'll say, that's fine. So then I'll go here, and then I'll go back down, and I'll start listening. So let me show you those macros, and I've broken them up, uh, because sometimes you want to use them independently. So I'm going to go up here, I'm going to go macro, and the first one is dupe original uh, track. So I'm going to make a duplicate. So the first thing I do is I take this track, and I make a duplicate and bring it down here. And if you notice, I have it above the label because I want, if there's any editing done on this here, I want it to change the spacing and change all the... So if I take something and I copy it and I put it in here, I want all these to all stay in line together. So they all move together. If I had it down below, it would be out of sync then. So I have this in the notes, all this, and also you can go to my downloads and download these so you don't have to try to build this whole thing. So the first thing I do is I take it and I set it to the full width. So you can see the full width, and then I select this whole track here. So that's that right there. Then I join it. Remember there was a bunch of little cuts along here and everything? I join it all together. Then I duplicate it. And when it duplicates, it actually goes down to the bottom here. Then I mute all the tracks because I'm going to unmute it later on, later on. Then I move the focus track, which is the bottom one here. I want to unsolo that, so I'm unmuting it. Then I move this track up to here. 
Then I select none. So basically I unselect everything. Then I move the focus to the first track. Now I have to do these. I can't. There's ways of doing it, but this is how I've done it. Move the focus to this first track. Then I move the focus to the next track. So now I'm focused on here. Then I toggle the focus. And then I select the whole thing. And then I increase, I de increase the volume right here up because it just is helpful to do that. So what I end up doing is I haven't mastered it yet. I've just duplicated it. So I'm going to show you here what I just did. I'm going to do it real quick. So I'm going to go uh, Control D. And so that's what I did. That that macro. So it just made a duplicate and it highlighted. And I have it highlighted because now I'm going to master it. Now I'm going to walk you through each step of what I'm going to do in the mastering. So here, I'm just going to just take a little small section so it doesn't take so much time to master it. So I'm going to go to here, and the first thing I'm going to do is noise reduction. Remember, I got the sample here. Then I'm going to go in effects, and then I'm going to do the noise reduction. And then I already have the profile, and it applies it. So it took all the noise all the way through. So kind of the ambient room rumble. It's going to take it out of everything. So it impacts it. So if you hear that it sounds robotic, you might need to adjust that. Uh, so just don't apply the macro and say, oh, that's good. Make sure it sounds good. And so this, if it sounds robotic or something, this might be where you need to adjust it. You might not need it to go down to, if we go up here, noise reduction, negative 12 might be too low. You might need to go to uh, 6, negative 6, bring it down 6 dBs. The next effect is really simple. It's just click removal. It just takes out the little clicks and pops of the people's mouth. And I just found it very beneficial. So you just do that. And the parameters are there. And I keep the default settings and then I apply it and it takes out the little clicks. It doesn't really do like a lot of things, but it does help clean it up a little bit. Next thing I do is I normalize it. So I normalize it to negative two and I apply that and it brings it up. So now I can start working with it. So you can see that it's cleaned up in here and it because I cleaned out the noise, it doesn't bring the, the noise up. I want to clean the noise out first and then bring it up. And I'm going to do a little bit more of cleaning noise because the next one I'm going to do now is the noise gate. And this is where you have to have the Nyquest. This is a Nyquest uh, effect. So if you don't have this, you're not going to be able to do the noise gate. Click it here. And this is the one that you probably need to play with the most because you might trim the beginning of words or the ends of words or, you know, P's or something like that. And if you find that, then you're going to have to reduce uh, this level of re reduction. So you might make it so it's not negative 20. That's pushing it down 20 dBs. You want to maybe only push it down 10 dBs and everything. So this is how that works. So then you apply that. And so it cleaned up noise in between. That will clean up some of the breasts. It doesn't get rid of all breasts, but breathing is not bad. And hearing breasts is not bad, but you don't want big old puffs and stuff like that. They're big old gas. You'll probably have to manually remove those out. The next effect is a compressor. And this is kind of where a lot of the magic happens. So you come to here and you go to compressor. And what it's going to do, and if you... Go to the compressor information in Reaper. It's really good how it explains it. So anything right here, I have the th threshold set at negative 12. So anything above negative 12, it's going to compress down to one fourth the highs, four to one. And here it's the noise, the floor of the noise. And we ran a noise gate. So anything below this, it's not going to affect. So when I do this, you'll see that these smaller parts will get higher and these taller parts will get down. So when I apply it, I have a small section here, but you'll see that they'll become more even in height. And see, it's gone up. And so now, go back, you can see that this high peak and these low peaks right here, and then they're all more even. So now your volume is more even. It did bring up some noise. So now we're going to take it and we're going to make it a little bit louder by 
trimming off the top of this right here by limiting. So if you feel it's too harsh, too strong, you might want to go back to the compressor here and make it maybe three to one. Only taking one third of it instead of uh, one fourth of it, bringing it to one fourth the height. So only bring it to one third of the height. I don't want to apply it again. But then the limiter, also, this is a Nike West effect. It's going to trim off the top here. And so this is up to about negative one. So it's going to take off about one dB, uh, two dBs. It depends on the height here. So when you do that, it trims it off. But there's still some dynamics. I don't want it that it's just totally flattened out. Let me go back here on limiter. And if I, you know, really take it down, you know, I'll take it down five dBs. This is extreme. And then it really crunches it and takes the dynamics out of it. So I don't want to do that. So I come to here and I'm going to go back to negative two. So it's kind of find that balance of being loud without, you know, and having some dynamics. So then there's the limiter. And then I take it at the very end here and I normalize it to negative two dBs. And so it didn't adjust it because it was already at negative two dBs. So that effect is right here. If you go tools, macros, and I have this as a separate effects because when we do batch processing, you might want to remaster things. And so you want to have it as a separate effect. So basically it come in here and I do have this, you can download it and I have it in the notes too. I want to reduce the noise. Remember we got the sample. Then I'm going to click remove, then normalize, then the gate, compressor, limit it, and then normalize. So I just showed you what it was doing, but this just does it really fast. Now let's put the duplicate and the mastering together. So you can put a macro inside a macro. So I'm going to go to tools, macro, and it's called make master track. So you click here and it's just really simple. I take the macro, this is duplicate original macro, then the mastering macro. So basically I duplicated it and I had it highlighted and then it's going to master and then I have it mute the tracks. Then I have it unsolo. Then I have it fit to width. So it goes from side to side here. Then I decrease the volume. I bring this down and when you decrease the volume, it comes down 60 dBs because a lot of times when you're listening to this, this has been so soft and all of a sudden this is really loud. And so I just bring that down and I just make it part of the macro and then I save. So that way, when I go back here, control M and control shift M and there it just does that just to du duplicate. Now it's doing the mastering macro and then it did a couple other things to clean it up there. Then the last one was the I call it retakes. So and when I highlight this here, wait, not the highlight. I just do the shift record. It'll start recording down here. And so that macro come to here and I call it retake right here. That's a real simple one. I mute all tracks because I don't want it to, I do have it so when I'm dubbing, this won't play, but I just typically you want to listen back to this right away to see if that's correct. And then you don't have to sit here and mute and unmute things. So I put the mute in there. So that's, you can decide if you want the. Then I record to a new track. So I tell it to record a new track and it puts it down here and then I save the project. So that's just a real simple macro, but then it, it just really helps to be able to do those retakes. And then I can take this and cut, put it up here, paste, and you'll see maybe these will move a little bit. Yeah, move it a little bit. And then when I get done, and I'll show you in my routine what I do, I remaster this because I've made some changes and it's real simple. So those are my macros that I use when I'm doing proofing. I make a master and then I can do retakes and I'm listening to the master. And if there's something wrong with it, uh, clipping things, I can go into my macro here. And under the master narration, I can make adjustments to these, remaster it, and the people can say, oh yes, that sounds good. And so it's just really nice to be able to have that and that they're, they're checking the final product. And you'll see at the very end how this just makes doing the project so much quicker. 
If you found any value in this video, please like, subscribe, and share so YouTube will recommend it to others.